Well, hey guys, welcome back. Now, a lot of you will have noticed over the last couple of months that I've been including some 360 footage in my latest content. That is thanks to this little genius of a camera, the Insta360 ONE X2. Now, this has been uh, sent to me free of charge for review. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through my sort of experiences with it over the last couple of months. Basically, I've broken it down into a couple of um, uh, parts. Firstly, in a second, I'm gonna take you through a short video clip on exactly all the camera angles and accessories and how you can actually use this uh, camera on uh, motorbike mounted form and then after we've uh, watched that video then I'll come back and talk to you about how I've been getting on uh, over the last couple of months with this camera. Now it wouldn't be a typical TLR video review without beer so I've got mine here some of Budweiser's finest so we'll just crack that bad boy open. Whoops. So you go and get your beer enjoy the video clip and I'll see you back in a couple of minutes. Cheers. Going fishing. Well, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that short clip. I basically just touched the surface on uh, what you can do with this camera. Well, now we're gonna talk through how I actually mounted it onto the bike uh, shortly, but I just wanted to sort of talk about the camera for a couple of minutes, um, just to give you a sort of insight into the camera. Basically, this is the camera. It's a short sort of uh, stubby camera, very good quality. It feels, it's got a good weight to it. It's very sturdy and it's basically got two lenses on the camera, one at the front and one at the back. Each lens films then 180 degrees. 
um, they're stitched together, so you do have a stitch line which, can, uh, which is controlled by the um, editing software, so that stitch line is pretty much edited out. So giving you that feature of 360 degrees of field of view. So this camera will basically film everything, regardless of where you point it, that's just the beauty of using this camera. You don't have to set the camera up so the lens is pointing in the right direction to get everything in shot. You choose basically the shot you want later in post, when editing your footage. So you can point this camera pretty much where any you, any way you want. It does not matter, it films everything and you can choose your footage later on. It's got a little um, a touch screen display at the front, which I'll just show you in a sec. I'll just turn it on here. So it's got a touch screen display, which works beautifully. It interacts uh, really well, so you can change settings on the fly um, directly in the camera. You can use the app if you do if you do want to change some specific stuff that's not um, in the camera itself. You can use the app um, when you've connected it to your phone. Um, that's through iPod, the uh, iPod. That's through Android or um, iOS. So it's a beautiful little screen, um, and it's, it does everything that you needed to do. As I said, you don't have to use the screen to set the shot at all. You can just use the touch screen to set up or to control your settings. You really don't need to see if, if the camera's in view via the. Um, via the display, but you can do if you wish, but there's absolutely no need, as I said, it films everything in shot. A little uh, one-touch record button down the bottom, a little LED light, uh, lights up blue to show you that the power is on, and if you hit record, that will then change to uh, red, and that will then blink red to indicate that it's recording. The screen does um, time out after a few seconds, so your screen will go black, but you've then got this LED light, which works well, I think, um, to let you know that you're still recording. It's got various microphones dotted around the camera to give you sort of four-way audio. Now, I don't use the audio at all out of this camera, obviously, it's mounted on the bike, but it does actually handle the wind noise uh, pretty well when bike mounted. But as I said, I'll be using audio from my helmet mount um, or my helmet camera, so I don't need to use the audio from this camera. It's got a little flip-up um, uh, doorway on the side here, so if you did want to um, connect um, external power to it, you can, so you can extend <coughs> You can run a cable up to your camera and uh, use it through external power, uh, battery bank, etc. And you would plug that then into the side, giving you external power. But you have to be careful what cable you use because basically anything that's poking out forward of the either lens will actually be in the shot. So this little door that, um, that is mounted on the side, it's best to actually remove that. You can just pull that off and uh, put that to one side. But again, depending on the cable that you use, obviously this cable would be in shot, so not ideal. But there is a way of getting around that if you um, buy the mic adapter, which um, fits into the side of the camera. You can then um, attach an external microphone if you so wished, or um, again, you can uh, put your external power cable into the bottom of the camera or into the bottom of the adapter here. Now it's a bit of a, um, a bit of a uh, poor example there because I've got a, a 90 degrees uh, USB cable, but if you had a straight one, the cable would then run down the side of the camera and it uh, wouldn't be in shot and you can just wrap the camera around whatever you, um, mount or extension pole that you're using and it won't be in the shot. Now that's another feature of this camera that's absolutely amazing is the sort of disappearing selfie stick. So basically whatever you attach uh, the camera to, uh, whether it be a uh, selfie stick, um, I use RAM mounts which we'll cover in a second. So you attach the selfie stick to the bottom of this camera. You can extend it as far as you want it, but this selfie stick or this stick is actually deleted from the footage in, in, in the software, which is included. You don't have to do any of that yourself, it's automatically deleted. Um, so it gives you that drone effect, if you like. If you've got the um, pole extended further, uh, further away, it looks like the camera is following uh, whatever it's filming. It looks absolutely amazing. So we've covered the small door at the top here for external power or an external uh, microphone. Coming further down the camera, we've got our um, battery port. Now this is quite a large battery and this um, will give you um, claimed uh, 18 minutes of record time on a full charge and I can confirm that is actually accurate. This will outlast pretty much all my GoPros with regards to battery power, apart from my Hero 9, uh, but this, this will give you 18 minutes of record time. Inside you've got your port uh, for your SD memory card micro SD card. Um, now uh, Insta360 uh, recommends nothing less than a U3 um, fast or speed um, on your uh, memory card but I can confirm a U1 
will actually work as well. So they, they can be picky apparently, um, but I haven't had any trouble with, um, I use a SanDisk, a U3 or as I said, a U1 will actually work as well. Um, but if you want to have uh, peace of mind, then you can order um, Insta360's own branded um, micro SD cards and obviously they'll work um, no problem at all. So if you have got an issue with that, or you're unsure, then when you're buying a camera, then you can order um, a memory cards directly from there. But I can confirm SanDisk U3 or U1 um, SD cards do work in this camera. So that's pretty much the basics of the camera. I'm not going to go through all the menu systems and settings that the camera can do. I'm sure there's um, other videos online that you can watch with regards to setting out, but there's really little to do um, with this camera. I film in the highest resolution it can do, which is 5.7K at uh, 30 frames per second. I'll just leave that um, as the standard setting, and that's pretty much all I change, or all I set up on the camera, is just to make sure that it's in that setting when it's started up, and away I go. Also, Insta360 sent me an abundance of um, uh, accessories. This is the selfie stick, which um, extends quite far out. And all of these accessories, it's all sort of aluminum, it's all sturdy, it's all very good quality um, uh, accessories. So that is the uh, selfie stick, selfie pole. They also sent me a tripod, so you can set up your, um, your camera at the side of the road or on a desk, whatever you're using it for. If you're vlogging, screw your camera into the three-quarter thread that's mounted on the bottom of the camera. Same on the selfie stick. And you can then use your camera wherever you want it, using it to, to vlog, set up at the side of the road, wherever you want. The legs are extendable to give you that bit of extra height if you so wished. Uh, they also sent me a um, the mic adapter or the external mic adapter with external power, a small neoprene case, which is ideal. Uh, the lens cover, which is an absolute must because if you, in fact, I can show you now, if you need to lay the camera down at all, obviously line it down on either side, you're gonna damage the lens. And to, to balance it on the side there is, is a no. So you've got to get the lens cover with it so you can put the camera down. Got a spare battery with a sturdy battery case. Now in here obviously just houses a spare battery and you've got a little um, port or a little clip in there to, uh, to house a spare um, memory card if you so wished and a sort of hard case, uh, carry case, which I don't use too much, um, but I do take it all with me just in case I do need to have that extra bit of protection. So those are the accessories they've sent me. I do have actually a charging hub coming with a couple of more spare batteries so you can charge more batteries um, while you're on the go because in my experience, one, one battery isn't enough. If you've got 80 minutes of charge time, um, or 80 minutes of record time, sorry, um, charging does take a while. So. Obviously, if you've got that in your tank bag, you have to charge it in in in, uh, in camera. So through the um, external port, you can charge the camera. So you've got to you've got to have cha that charging in your tank bag, and for that um, amount of charge time, that's obviously not uh, that you're not using the camera within that time. So that's that's a no no. So you've got to have at least one spare battery. Now, a lot of you have asked how I actually uh, mount it on the bike. Now, Insta360 did send me a motorbike mounting kit and a helmet mounting kit. The helmet mounting kit is pretty much similar to sort of GoPro um, style um, mounts. It's uh, very similar, so they're in, in interchangeable or compatible with the, each other. So if you are using GoPro, a lot of your mounts will work on the Insta360. You just need a three quarter thread um, ad um, adapter that goes in the bottom and then you can then mount that on any GoPro style mount. So if you do have them already, then um, it's not necessary to buy the um, helmet mounted kit. Uh, GoPro's one will fit or will uh, be compatible with Insta360. Now with the motorcycle mounting kit, it comes with um, a tough claw, which will mount to sort of any sort of handlebar, um, crash bar, etc. So this will clamp onto any bar. You tighten down that um, on the uh, thumb screw there and that will um, mount to the bike or to the handlebar, to the crash bars, and then you'll be left with this ball joint here, which is extended or an extendable clamp goes on the top there. You get a little adapter there, that's what I'm talking about with the, the, the ball joint at the bottom and it's got a, um, a thread on top, so that goes in there as such. You tighten that all down, put your camera on top, tighten that all down and you can then mount that, um, as I do most of the time, mount it to the crash bar on the side of the bike. Now these are Insta360 own brand um, uh, mounts, but they are exactly the same as um, the RAM mounts that I used previously. Very sturdy, I don't think, that, I mean they are slightly expensive, 
but if you're buying a camera that's worth such an amount of money then you've got to you've got to fork out on, on a decent mounts to mount it securely to the bike if you go cheap on your mounts and your camera flies off down the road that's that's pretty much um, you done and dusted or the camera done and dusted so you've got to you've got to go um, all out with regards to mounts but as I said um, Insta360's own branded um, mounts are exactly the same brilliant quality still the same good quality really sturdy aluminium and you can lean on these thumb screws oh you can you can get these secure you can tighten these down so much the camera is not going anywhere so if you're going to mount it on the bike highly recommend um, investing in these mounts so basically what i did in a lot of the shots that you've seen in the um the sort of video clip that i showed you earlier mounted this onto the side of the crash bar or onto the handlebars or even on the real grab rails um, on the pillion seat uh yes how did i do it i lost my train of thought so I had the claw mounted on the crash bars, then a ram arm, and then I put the selfie stick on top of that. Now this is the great thing about how versatile and how quick and easy it is to change uh, camera angles, camera views. The thing is absolutely awesome. So that is basically how I had it mounted on the crash bar using the tough claw with the um, extendable um, arm the ram mount arm, the Insta360 selfie stick with the camera uh, mounted on the side. Now I, that's basically the normal setup I had, um, which you, you saw in the video before. And then that just gives you the, you know, if you, if you then want to change the view, you can either point it then to the, to the rear, you can point it to, to the front, you can point it horizontal or vertical if you like, tighten it back up. And if you do want to get that drone, that drone angle, then you can just extend the pole further out and away you go. And, it does look a lot to have, and it looks a bit silly at some points, but if you get all these um, uh, tightened up uh, uh, enough, then um, it stays on the bike. You'd think that it would wobble about all over the place, but it depends obviously on the road surface you're riding on, but this 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 will hold. Plus, in my opinion, obviously, uh, a lot of these, there's uh, it's rubberized on the, um, the ram claw here. You've got a rubberized uh, ball joint here, one there. So if you add a couple of these ball joints in, it just cuts out all the sort of high frequency vibrations that a lot of bikes will produce. Yes, you'll get a bit of a wobble on the pole and obviously naturally depends how long you've got the pole. The longer you extend it, the more it will sort of wobble about um, in the air. But the camera can handle all the sort of wobbles and whatnot that the, the bike or the obviously the nature of the um, amount will produce, but it will, it, will, um, it will sort that out. So, as I said, it depends on the road surface you're riding on. If you're riding on UK roads, um, you may have an issue, or well, not so much of an issue, but you may see some slight wobble in your footage, but the roads that I ride on are fairly good, so it all stays perfectly nice and smooth. Now, with regards to smoothness and stabilization, this does have um, steady state flow stabilization, which works an absolute treat. So this will cut out any sort of camera wobble, any sort of vibrations that will sort it out for you in post. You don't have to do anything uh, with regards on that uh, in the editing suite. You can just turn it on or off, but always leave it on and you will get butter smooth footage. It does have the horizon lock, so it's good for when you're um, uh, uh, motorbike mounted as you lean the bike over the horizon stays nice and still and you can then get the appreciation of sort of appreciation of lean angle on the bike and it looks absolutely mega but like anything in life nothing is perfect it does have a couple of issues that i would um, like to address the firstly um if you if you continuously uh, uh film with this camera so it just means one press of the button and you continuously film um for example two hours the camera only um, uh, creates half an hour um, stints or half an hour video files. I think they're about 10 gigabytes uh, long and they will then stitch them together um, later on. But you will have separate video files that you then add to one another in your editing uh, software or in the Insta360 Studio software, editing software. Um, but there is a slight uh, glitch in that, that in, in the fact that um, it doesn't stitch them perfectly together. You lose. Um, an amount of seconds up to sort of, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds I've, I've sort of experienced where you've actually got no footage. So you do have to bear that in mind if you're continuously filming, is to bear that in mind that it's, that it only films in 30 minute stint. So if you, if you are filming something sensitive or there's something you're not going to ever um, film again, just to bear that in mind, it, is, it does make sense in that case maybe to stop the camera after 25 minutes if you can keep a timer on it and then start the camera again physically yourself, that way you don't then 
to lose the, the, the precious seconds that you might have if you're filming something that you'll never film again. Now the GoPro users amongst you will know that GoPro doesn't have an issue with that when it creates with the video files of you continuously filming, they are stitched together within a sort of a millisecond and you don't lose any footage, but that hasn't, hasn't worked out yet on this. Maybe that'll get updated uh, later on, maybe in a firmware update, I don't know. Um, but that is something to bear in mind that you will lose a couple of seconds when they stitch them together. Uh, secondly, I found um, uh, I had an issue with the camera of late. If I was um, not continuously filming, i.e. Um, stop and start and recording for different sort of video clips. Um, for some reason, um, say on the third th third video, um, I'd hit re uh, record and the camera would have changed its settings without me knowing or without me physically changing them myself. And I would only notice then later on at home in post when I was editing the videos that for some reason the, the stabilization had turned itself off, which you can't actually turn off in camera. So I don't know why that had disappeared but that was then the footage uh, ruined. It was out the window, it wasn't, it wasn't usable. So that is something um, that I'm in chats with with Insta360 just to help them sort of um, get that issue sorted. They never heard of it, heard of it for, uh, before, but it was there for me. It's only happened a couple of times, but the last ride out or in the video that you saw at the start of this video, the little small clip, I just continuously filmed, just made sure everything was the right set and I had no issue. So that is pretty much the only negatives I've found with the camera thus far. It's worth um, pointing out that when you're setting up your camera and you're mounting it wherever you're mounting it, on your handlebar helmet, uh, bike mounted, wherever, you'd, wherever you're mounting it, you do have to bear in mind of the stitch line. What I mean by that is obviously the front lens films in 180 degrees, so does the rear lens, and then they're then stitched together within the software. So you do have a visible stitch line um, later on that you'll see either on your phone or on your laptop, um, you can click on um, a feature that's in, in within the software that does its best to, to, to um, um, stitch the uh, the two uh, cameras together. Because you have to bear in mind um, it's it's two video files, so a front video file and a rear video file that have to be stitched together, um, and you can get some slight distortion. So you do have to bear in mind how you angle the camera um, when you're mounting it to whatever you're mounting it to. If I was to mount this, if I was sat here vlogging and mount it this way, I'd have a stitch line right down the middle of my face. So you may, get, you may see some slight um, distortion with that. So you do have to make sure that you tilt the camera or you turn the camera um, to where that stitch line isn't really, um, doesn't really become apparent and isn't gonna mess up your shot, but that is something uh, to bear in mind. With regards to editing your footage um, from your camera, you can either do it on the smartphone um, Insta360 app or the Insta360 Studio for PC. Now it's either for, either for Mac or Windows or for iOS and Android if you're using a smartphone. I don't tend to edit anything on my um, phone because the files are just far too big. It's easier to do on PC, so most of the time I edit on PC. Now it does up my workflow greatly. It, um, it takes a lot longer for me to edit my videos if I'm including any 360 footage in uh, my content because you do have to edit the, uh, the footage out of this camera independently from everything else. So I have to edit everything from this camera first and then carry it over into my editing suite uh, where I can add my uh, footage from all my other GoPros that I've used um, out on rides. So it does, it does create or it does give me extra work using this camera but the results that you can get from it are absolutely amazing. So although it takes a bit of time to get used to it, it's a very easy software to learn. It's nothing too difficult, um, uh, but the, the results that this camera can give um, are spectacular. And to be honest, I would probably I would probably ditch off some of my GoPros and just use these <clears throat> uh, if I could, but um, I think it'd just, take, it'd just take way too long for me to edit videos if I was just purely using three or four of these cameras um, out on rides. The, the work would just be in a, a, immense. So unfortunately that probably can't happen, but maybe a second one um, would be doable. Um, but for, for me as, as now, the content that I produce, um, one is sufficient. So to sum up, I have been um, thoroughly impressed with this camera. It's been an absolute pleasure to use. And um, yeah, I'm chuffed to bits that I've been able to, to get hold of one and uh, included it into my footage. Now, um, it, there has been a sort of a, um, a mixed bag with regards to uh, feedback from a lot of uh, viewers. Now, a few years ago, you know, when these things first came out, unfortunately, some people um, didn't enjoy watching the footage that people had created with them because it, just because you film in th it films in 360 degrees doesn't mean you have to use 360 degrees 
field of view of that content. Now, for a lot of people, they said, you know, watching some people's content, it made, it made them feel sick because they just spun their, con spun their content and videos that they were filming just on an axis and it made people feel ill. Now, I'm trying to sort of um, get that sort of mindset or thought or opinion about these cameras sort of gone, done and gone, because just because you can film in 360 degrees doesn't mean you have to use it all. You can basically just choose whatever shot you want. So as long as as long as long you use this correctly, I think you can achieve some amazing shots with it. So I've been, as I said, thoroughly impressed with this camera and I'm going to be using this for a long time in my uh, further content to come. So that is pretty much all I can say about it. Hopefully I've covered everything. If I have missed anything, um, anything that you want to know, then don't hesitate to, to drop me a comment down below and I should do my very best to answer your comments, questions and queries. If you are interested in buying the Insta360 ONE X2 or any of the accessories that you've seen in this video, links are down in the description below. They are affiliate links, which means I get a little kickback from Insta360 and it helps the channel um, out immensely. But it does mean for you guys, you may even get a free gift. So I know they've been offering um, uh, selfie sticks or tripods. Uh, there's something in it for you guys as well. So using those links is also beneficial uh, to you. I'll also include a link in the description um, uh, to their Black Friday um, deals that they've got. Obviously now is the best time to buy if you're really interested in buying a 360 camera from them. It doesn't have to be this camera, it can be anything, or even just um, accessories if you are already an owner of an Insta360 camera. It's the best time to be buying now because they've got all kinds of deals and all kinds of discounts. So as I said, all the links will be included in the description below. Well, that is pretty much it for today. Hopefully that has been of interest to you. If you did enjoy the video, then be sure to leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, then by all means, leave me a thumbs down. I've been Sean. Thanks for watching. See you next time.